Don't some get some. How about those friggin' pirates? Yes, I am a pirate. You have to go with the pirates because, of course, they have cannons and everything. It's a pirate's life for me. Be proud of who you are and what you are. Be a pirate. It is a first down. Pirate. Because when you're in East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach in East Carolina, you don't come to East Carolina, you don't play in East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it! I think I've ever been in a building as loud as that was. It was deafening in there. You will get them all. I can promise you that. Hit it purple all night long in Eastern North Carolina! You're watching The Sports Objective, the podcast for pirates. All right, welcome into Sunday on the Sports Objective as we've got a lot to talk about uh, for the next hour or so. Thank you so much for joining us. A uh, big crowd I know are going to be on uh, tonight watching and listening all over Pirate Nation and beyond, and we appreciate that very much. we got lots to talk about as uh, we'll be talking about the NCAA football game. Some of you have maybe vetched out and played the uh, game all weekend long. It came out on Friday. Uh, some people played it uh, Wednesday, I think, is uh, when a lot of the people that pre-ordered it. So we'll see how that goes. And then, uh, obviously, we'll talk about that. Tomorrow is the beginning of the AAC Media Days in Texas, the Fort Worth area. So we'll see about that. And uh, there's a lot of storylines there we can talk about. Talk about Pirate Nation and football as we're just about two weeks away, in fact, away from uh, the start of fall camp so as we bring in our good friend kyle from lagrange barber how are you man can you hear me yes sir okay hold on i got some kind of notification about my browser here i'm trying to read it okay okay all right you good uh, yeah it's telling me my browser has lost connection to my camera which i did myself i turned off so i don't know why it's notified me of that but right. anyway yeah what's going on dave well, I just have to get your, uh, I didn't get it. Oh. I didn't get your, uh, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> can you hear me? I, I can hear you. I also heard Ball and Chain by uh, Poison. Uh, sorry, yeah. I don't know what's going on there. Sorry, my computer is uh, acting a little crazy. I apologize, oh. folks, but I was trying to. All right, so uh, Let's start off. Welcome into the Sports Objective po Podcast. I'm Kyle from Lagrange Barber. Alongside me is the host Dave Richmond from Williamson, North Carolina. Welcome in, everyone. Yes, thank you. I was going to say I want to get your thoughts on the NCAA football game. That's one of the things we're going to talk about tonight, and we got other topics. But how is the game? We've been waiting. Uh, now, have you played time. it? No, I've got to get it, uh, but I haven't gotten it. It's been a busy weekend, man. It's just uh, download it. Just download it. I am going to. Uh, it's good. Um, I, uh, I I thought uh, interesting that they have Garcia as the starter over Hauser. Yeah, they have him, they have him ranked one. That. Yeah, they have him ranked one point higher. Um, graphics are really good, obviously, um, compared to you know the one that came out in thirteen, uh, right. which is the last one that came out. Um, it's fun. Um, I like how you can select opponents at different tier levels. So uh, East Carolina is tier three in terms of where they're ranked. So it's tier one, tier two, tier three. So when you play online is what I'm talking about against other people, you can select the opponent at tier three, you know, at a school that's also ranked tier three, um, which makes it a lot more fair. Um, so that's so you good. You can't pick uh, Michigan against East Carolina or. Well, you Alabama. can, if you play anybody against any tier, but you know, um, you can select play at a specific tier, uh, which I've done a few times. I'm against. I hadn't had a chance to play it a lot. My record right now is four and three, uh, playing against people. And my, but my three losses are to Arkansas, TCU, and Texas. So I was my three losses were all against people playing at a higher tier. Um, and then my wins, I, I beat BYU, who's tier two uh, guy playing as BYU. I've beaten Rutgers. 
Army, and uh, UCF. Um, well, UCF and Rutgers are also tier three, but just barely. Wow. And then uh, USF, of course, is supposed to. One of the things we're going to talk about is I'm going to get, I'm going to put Kyle on the spot um, at some point, but uh, I wanted to get your rankings if you uh, just thought about this uh, right before the show. Um, but I want to get Kyle from LaGrange Barber's rankings. If I could give you a ballot, because you are a member of the media, even if you don't want to be, <laughs> if I could give you a ballot, um, and I'll let you think on this, Kyle, but I'm going to throw this out to folks uh, that want to, if you want to comment on this and give your opinions. Um, but Kyle, if I give you a ballot and I say, I want you to rank the teams in the conference, could you do it? And we'll ask you towards the end you of the You mean story. order of finish? Well, yeah, like, you know, who One do you through think? 14? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I, I think that would be kind of hard. I, I, I think it would be better to do it in tiers. Um, I, I would say tier one. Uh, would be uh, Memphis, Tulane, uh, UTSA. Uh, then I would say tier. Then I would say tier two would be South Florida, uh, East Carolina. Okay. Um, uh, probably Army, maybe. Um, there's so many damn teams in the league now. <laughs> you, you forget people, um, and, and I really have to do some UAB. research. Well, I, you know, I, I need to research UAB. You know. They were up and down. Their offense should be really good. Uh, their offense was a good t- at times last year. Temple's uh, going to be really bad. Uh, yeah, Temple Temple would be at the bottom of the league. Um, you know, Navy, I don't think Navy's going to be much better on offense this year. Uh, their defense will be good. Charlotte, you know, again, I think it'll be good on defense. I don't see much improvement from their offense. Um, but, you know, um, immediately, I think your tier one is Tulane. Memphis, UTSA, and then some people want to put South, South Florida in that tier one. I'm not ready to do that yet. I'd They're put a them, team. Uh, I'd, I'd put them at a tier two along with us, uh, and, and probably UAB. And quite honestly, some schools in the American, I need to do a little bit more research on. Um, I got my feel still. I need to get to reading. I need to catch up on some uh, some podcasts from other folks that analyze, um, you know, other teams. Um but anyway, by the way, shout out to Igo, not for his podcast, but uh, he was a guest. I don't even, I wish I could remember the name of this podcast, our YouTube show. Um, but uh, they, uh, they're a group of five uh, YouTube show, and uh, they had Igo on and uh, the preview East Carolina. And um, I, thought, uh, I thought they did a good job asking questions, but I thought Igo did a great job uh, representing ECU and really. Uh, giving in-depth answers, uh, whatever the name of that podcast is, but they do nothing but group of five. I wish I could remember the name of it so I could tell people to watch it. I'm not doing much good right now uh, without the name of the show, but uh, if you can find it on YouTube from that vague description, it's worth watching. All right. And Robert says G5 Beehive. That's it. That's it. I believe that is it, Robert. Um, If you watched it, uh, yeah, he probably watched it and agrees that I go did a great job on it. All right, so G5. That, that sounds five. right. That sounds right. All right, thank you, Robert, as always, for listening and uh, watching. We've uh, been doing great on these Sunday shows, so we'll try to keep those up. And Kyle, man, I tell you what, uh, I'm looking forward to I'm glad you reminded me of two. I got to do two things this week. My homework, um, I'm glad you reminded me. I was going to do that last week, but I'll try to do that tonight, get my feel still. I'm going to do both. I like the digital version and the in-hand yeah, I, I got both. Um, I don't know if they're still doing it, but when I ordered mine back in June, if you ordered the traditional paper version, you got the digital version for free. Um, and you pay 20 bucks for the digital version. So the only difference is you have to pay shipping for the paper. But uh, if you want the paper version, it, it like I said, I don't know if they're still doing it. Uh, you get the dig- you, At that time, you were getting the digital version for free, uh, which I think for most people, the paper version is more convenient. But for me, with um, you know my vision, I actually love having it on a tablet or a phone so I can zoom in as much as I want. Because right. if you if you buy Phil Steel, uh, you know best damn reading glasses in the world, man. That that <laughs> book is so full of information. The print is so small. Yeah. So, but um, uh, Phil, as we talked about, um, you know, on previous episodes, has us as the most improved team in the country, um, in his most improved teams list. And uh, all six of his sets of power rankings call for us to go to a bowl, and one calls us 
calls for us to go ten and two. So, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully uh, that uh, that particular computer is correct. Yeah, I'll go with that one. But I, I definitely think we're uh, in much better shape. And then, you know, I was looking at uh, before the show, getting ready for the show for the last couple hours, and just hard to stomach one and seven in the league. Um, and that's something we're going to talk about is uh, to the AAC media days. Uh, one thing that call, comes to mind, if you want to talk about that now, Kyle, is uh, looking at to be having able to see where we'll be picked to finish tomorrow. Yeah. And I, I can just about, I can, you know, the media yeah. typically, you know, I, I, I would expect Tulane or Memphis to be picked to win the league. Right. Uh, your, your top four is going to be Tulane, Memphis, uh, South Florida, UTSA. You, you can pick your order of finish. But it'll be interesting to see who they have fifth. You know, is it is it a UAB? Is it us? Is it um, you know, I don't, it's Tulsa, I, 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 Army maybe. It'll be interesting to see who they have fifth. Uh, that that's really, I would expect us not to be picked any lower than than seventh. Uh, but I wouldn't expect us to be picked any higher than fifth. But again, keep in mind we do not play Memphis, Tulane, or South Florida, so um, it wouldn't surprise me. If we're if the defense is going to be good, if the offense clicks early, if if the quarterback situation becomes apparent that we that we have our starter Garcia or or um, Hauser, if JDB's offense clicks early, um, because of not playing Memphis, Tulane, South Florida, we get UTSA at home. I, I could see us sneaking into the finishing second in the regular season. And sneaking into that conference championship game, it it wouldn't shock me. I'm not predicting that, but it would not right. shock me because keep in mind, there's, I wish there were divisions. There's not, but you got to finish second in the league. You don't have to win the league to play in the conference championship game. You don't have to win your division. You just have to finish second. Um, and with us missing three of the better teams in the conference, uh, wouldn't shock me at all. I think that, and uh, if people wonder why I'm so bullish, it's not optimism. Um, because like, uh, blind optimism, I think is what people have said in the past about me here on the show. It's uh, not because I love the pirates. I just really believe the job that Houston and company have done in the off season first by Houston hiring JDB, the fact that we have there, there's just so many things I think that we have going for us. And then with the scheduling gods, uh, we usually have everything stacked against us. And the fact that we don't play those. Uh, opponents. And I will say this, Kyle, we've talked about it before, but we talked about a winning season is what Houston needs. But if he has a losing season with those people that we don't even play. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, even a six and six, again, I think it depends on how you get to six and six. We start off, you know, one and five and then go in five in a row and, and end up six and six. I think, you know, you, you don't fire him, but um, I think most people's expectation is seven and five, but it, it, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, yeah, we, we do catch a break with some conference games, um, but we do have a uh, – that that four-game stretch after Norfolk State to start right. the season, Old Dominion on the road. They were a bowl team last year, um, beat App State in Norfolk. Then the very next week we play App, and then, you know, who's favored to win the Sun Belt. They won their division last year, um, got a returning quarterback. Um, and then after that, we – play Liberty and we all know what they did last year playing in the new year six. Uh, then after that UTSA. So it is a very tough four game stretch. Um, that, you know, when you, when you, when you just look at it at a glance, you go dominion app state Liberty UTSA, and it doesn't sound that tough, but it really is a four game stretch that won't determine our season, but I think it will determine if we're just fighting for a bowl game or if we're fighting for more. Whether it's just going to be we're fighting for six and six, seven and five, or if we're fighting for a potential, you know, conference championship game, if we're, you know, I'm not predicting us to be in the playoff hunt uh, as the group of five representative, but I'm just telling you the opportunity's there. If we're better than expected on offense, because we're a top twenty-five defense, so if we're better than expected on offense, the opportunity's there with App State and Liberty early to make some noise. Um, so, you know, hey, App plays Clemson the week before us. Could you imagine a 2-0 East Carolina just beat Old Dominion, then a 2-0 App State just beat Clemson in the top 25 coming into Greenville? Oh, man. Um, it would be packed, sold out, um, or at least near sold out. And 
that's just a recipe for somebody to get upset big time right there to me. I I hope they upset Clemson the week before they play us. I really do. I I forgot about that matchup. That's uh that, that's a great analysis there, Kyle. In fact, uh you're you're spot on as usual about Well, you remember they upset A and M a couple yeah. of years ago and then it took a Hail Mary to beat Troy. Um, yeah, I do. In in Boone. So um I'm just saying, man, it's if you pull off an upset like that and app is capable, it's hard to get up the next week and particularly when you're playing a good opponent, uh, like it was uh two years ago with Troy and in this case coming to Greenville in a game that is gonna be very important to us and our fan base and um to me, um yeah, I won't say it's a, a game that Houston needs to win like a must win because it's all about what you finish your record overall. But if we could find a way to beat App, that would rejuvenize this fan base big time. Yes, sir. sir. And speaking of App, uh, Robert says, thank you, Robert, for tuning in again. Uh, some podcasts are saying App will beat Liberty, and they're picking Rice, UAB, and North Texas as bubble bowl teams. Okay, Rice, UAB, who else? And North Texas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. North Texas is another one, Robert. You're right. That's another one that um first year head coach last year there went five North. and seven. But the previous head coach, you know, they had just won their division of conference USA the year before and they fired the coach. Um so the first year head coach going five and seven, it ain't like he was taking over a down program. Uh right. Seth Lut- Seth Luttrell had done an okay job there. Um so I um I, I tend to agree North Texas I would put them probably um, good call. I would put them right there, probably in that second tier with with, with East Carolina, South Florida. I would put North Texas right there too. Um, forget about the Mean Green; they haven't been in the league very long, and we haven't played them yet. We do play them this year. Unfortunately, it's in Denton, Texas, not in Greenville. Yeah, and you know, of course, FAU been... being a bubble bowl team, I wasn't impressed with F- or FAU. I wasn't impressed with FAU at all last year. Obviously, we beat them. Uh, but uh, dude's a good coach. Obviously, we all know what he did at Houston. Um, was up and down in Texas. But you would think, I, you know, I don't know what what kind of NIL money they have at Florida Atlantic. I don't know what they did with NIL this year. I need to look that up. Um, my guess is they probably picked up a few nice pieces. But um, you would think Tom Herman would would have them as a bubble bowl team, uh, so to speak, in year two. But um, you know, we need to win and beat teams. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's year two for Tom Harmon. This is year two for my or year six for Mike Houston. So uh, we we better be handling our business against Florida Atlantic when they come to Greenville. And you know, speaking of NIL, Kyle, I think uh, that's one of the reasons uh, we talk about with uh, JDB coming along. Um, I think also with the NIL, we've been able to bec- we've been able to do much much better. Is my understanding the people I've talked to. Uh, say that that has really, even though that we're far away from what we, our potential, um, our ceiling, if you will, when it comes to NIL, I do believe we're making headway. And, you know, you and I, three years ago on this show, it was not gloom and doom, but it was like it's a new era. And, you know, you have to jump on board with the new or you get left behind uh, with the old. And Yeah, you, everybody's got to embrace NIL, whether you like it or not. Um, we, uh, we're about middle of the conference now, fifth or sixth, right. um, seventh, something like that with NIL. Um, and and we, we were told, we, we were told um, I don't remember now, but we were told uh, when we had, um, what's his name? I'm sorry, I'm horrible with names. The gentleman from Team Boneyard. Um, It'll come to me in a minute. <laughs> but we had him on, uh, well, you can't remember, that's bad. You don't remember names. We yeah. were told the amount we had this year uh, up to that point for football, it was in the millions. But I don't remember. Yeah. I remember it was four hundred thousand for basketball, but I cannot remember the amount for uh, for football. It was over a million. I th- I think it was around two. It was over two million, if I remember correctly. Well, yeah, and we've got a with us. I think it's just a matter of I'll put this one on the screen too for baseball. Twenty three club dot org uh, support your ECU baseball players through NIL. Um, I think, yeah, that, and there's an NIL luncheon. I don't know if you saw that. Um, uh, well, I missed out. Yeah. I uh, forget the date. Um, uh, I think maybe August 20, I don't know. Yeah, I, I should have done my research a little better. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, put it in the comments. Uh, there's an NIL luncheon for football. Um, 
coming up. The the proceeds from the tickets are going to go to NIL. Oh, and there they're, it is. And it's they're the looking Parker. for a title sponsor also for the event. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a Minji's Monday, August 19th. I've got it right here, Kyle. I didn't realize uh, the other day when I got this in my email. Uh, it's August Monday, August 19th. Doors are going to open up at 1130. Program starts at uh, 12. Save the date. Get this $50 per individual. It's $500 for a table of nine. That's a player. You get a, uh, to sit with a player assistant coach. Seven fifty, a table with a nine uh, with a table of nine, and that way you get either um, Blake Carroll or for the offense JDB. Uh, the, of course, that's two and a thousand dollars a table of nine. That's with head coach Mike Houston. Uh, they also have a five thousand dollar title sponsorship available. If you want to contact the Pirate Club, that's 252-737-4530. And all funds go directly to, as Kyle mentioned, Team Boneyard. Yep. And t- tickets will go live on Tuesday. I knew it was coming up. I just couldn't remember what day. But it's Tuesday is when you get your tickets. Um, and check that out, uh, ecupirates.com or ecupirateclub.com. So thank you, Kyle. I, I should have read that closely. I didn't see the... Um, I saw, I knew about the luncheon, but I didn't know that put two and two together. So it was a fundraiser for uh, team Bonard. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Hey, I'm glad that they're doing things that we are doing. Yeah. That. And, and, and one thing, and I know there's some laws in North Carolina about 50, 50 raffles at, at sporting events. Um, the Braves do it apparently every game. Uh, uh Bubba's at the Braves game today. He said the 50, 50 raffle was $63,000. Um, wow. So uh, there's a way to do it. I think you have to have a third party involved in North Carolina. Uh, okay. But if we could do a 50-50 raffle at a football game, yep. uh, you know, let's say the App State game, you got forty to 50,000 people in there. Um, you sell the tickets for $20 a piece. Uh, you sell 20,000 of them. Do the math. Uh, that's, that. you know, that would be, uh, what is that, $200,000? That sounds right. I'll, I'll have um, to. And if the 50-50 raffle, somebody would walk out with hundred grand and the other hundred grand would go to the uh to nil so i mean I, you know make it the goal to sell twenty thousand tickets at twenty dollars a piece and somebody's going to walk out with a hundred thousand dollars and the other hundred thousand goes to uh nil if you don't reach your goal then it's less money um and maybe you sell over twenty thousand but uh, I, I, I mean that that is a hell of a night somebody would walk out with life-changing money yeah kyle from the grange is like drinks for everybody not Hey, walk out with a hundred grand. Um, drinks for everybody I give a shit about. <laughs> well, here's a interesting thing. Uh, Robert's been uh, participating heavily. Thank you, Robert. Once again, Holton Ayler is making an announcement on Pirate Radio tomorrow, supposedly about NIL. Not sure though. I hadn't heard about that. But uh, Holton make an announcement. Yeah. Well, I I mean, well he's not by it. so. Uh, he's sponsoring somebody or, or, or an announcement on his show about NIL coming from I guess so. Boneyard or uh. yeah, put that back up. I guess so. That's all he had. So Robert, I, okay. we learn, we have the best listeners and viewers. They, they keep us informed. So, uh, thank you. I have not heard anything about that, but, uh, not saying it's not true. I just haven't heard about that, but if anybody knows, then, uh, put it up there. Sure. All right, and Johnny, hey, Johnny Stats, you know how much we love JR, Kyle. Here he mm-hmm. is, just for you, Kyle. That would be 200000 as you're correct, Kyle, and 200000 at $20 times 2000 There you go. So two thousand. all you need is 2,000 people to give $20 is what he's saying, right? Uh, I believe. Yes, I'm, that doesn't sound right, but it uh, – no, that doesn't sound right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're making ourselves look like idiots here. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's hard Hold to on one second. Up. I'll get this. Hold on. All right, Johnny, help me out, bro. <laughs> uh, 200000 at $20 each. $20 each times 2000 So, yeah, that's not right. 20 times 2000 will be 40000 uh, 40, right? So Correct. Yeah, it's 40000 okay. so. All right, so, yeah. Trying to do the math as we're doing live. Uh, I, I think he's. I think he's telling me. I think he's saying I'm correct on the two hundred thousand at twenty thousand tickets. Twenty thousand times two thousand. I think he's using a simple math formula, and and we're complicating it. Yep. 
All right. So Jr. says it would be a two thousand net gain, not one. Uh, one. Is that yeah, Johnny. I, I think what you're saying is making sense, but you're talking over our heads somehow. Yeah, so, he's not. Uh, <laughs> so. I went to East Carolina, Johnny. Come on, give me a break, Jr. Yeah. Uh, Jr. is the best. We appreciate him, and I tell you what, Kyle. The um, um uh, the enthusiasm I've been surprised about what is on. The number of people, not that uh, Pirate Nation doesn't travel well, let me just say that. So it's not that I'm surprised there. But there's a lot of people, man, that are going to ODU, Liberty, or both, like JR, myself. Um, I don't know how many road trips. I think we talked about that a couple weeks ago. But um, I know on the western part of the state, Bubba, and a lot of people are on that side of the state, um, they're going to, I mean, that's probably going to be the hardest ticket that Charlotte has had in the history of their football program. Yeah, they didn't even sell it out for Duke, if I remember right. So, no, um, no that would definitely be a sellout, a hard sellout. Um, it'll Can be you see like get... 8,000 people? I, I could see me. us having just as many, if not more, fans than Charlotte. And, yeah. Um, that will be an interesting environment. I um, I would uh, – I hope we win that day. Um, I, <laughs> that's, uh, I don't know. You know, their student – I don't imagine they have too many diehards, but their students, I'm sure, are going to be running their mouths um, if if they if they have any success against us or talking trash at the beginning of the game. So uh, that'll probably be a very interesting environment at the uh, stadium there. And um, they are expanding their stadium. They got the money from the state somehow to do that, and um, still not sure about how that worked. Me but too. Uh, they'll be expanding their stadium. I think to twenty five thousand. So um, something from fifteen to twenty five, right? Yeah. So, um, which, you know, I'm glad they're expanding their stadium. It's embarrassing to me to have them in the conference with a 15,000 seat stadium, but, uh, I'm still not sure how it came from the state, uh, the, the finances to do so. Well, that's, uh, exactly that. I mean, they need to give us, uh, uh, definitely a donation, uh, give us money, a grant or something because to finish, uh, to, yeah, to finish the indoor practice facility, exactly. if they can use state money to build their Three stadium. Million. We're just asking for three million for the General Assembly. I mean, I mean, I just build the son of a bitch with the money you got now, Gilbert. You, you got enough money to build the damn thing. Just I have just cut some calls somewhere and build the stupid thing. You would not believe. I wish that uh, the folks that are in the Ward Sports Medicine Building, and again, Kyle, myself, others, we actually like them a lot. So it's not like we have a personal vendetta against them. So I want everybody in the Ward Sports Medicine Building to know that we actually like them. However. Kyle and myself will be pirates when we die and everybody that comes on the show, whether they're a co-host or the listeners and viewers. And so what we're, I'm hearing, you would not believe Kyle at work, friends of mine, like yourself, others who've said that over and over again, David, they're asking me, when are they going to break ground on the indoor practice? Just build it. They've got enough money to build it. If you can't figure out how to build something for slightly cheaper than what you budgeted, then, then, you know, I, I, Money now needs to be going to NIL. We we yeah, yeah. we need to get this stupid indoor practice facility built and then concentrate on NIL. And we're very close on the baseball facility. I mean, that's but and that's just another thing is those two projects. If you go ahead and put the shovels out, the euphoria from the people, the excitement from the fact that wow, Kyle, we're actually starting to break ground, and then all of a sudden those donations and you have a big fundraising drive let's finish off the it's like in church i think i mentioned this before i'll say this again it's been a long time but i remember many years ago we had a thing at church where they actually fin- it's called something like finish off the note party and you get like a lot of the big people the contributors of the church and and uh, of course the congregation together and and uh, you know you may need fifty thousand or hundred thousand and what can you pledge and so that's that's exactly what we need to do here. We need to go ahead and get the shovels out, and then you have this big party. Let's finish it off. Uh, do you do something online? I don't know, but something. I'm just going to build it for the money you have now. Screw the other $3 million. You got enough money. Just scale back what we're going to do and build the damn thing. But, you know, uh, people can't, yeah. you know. Uh far as getting people motivated, the, the motivation for NIL is going to be this year, to me, with the money that was put into NIL last year, if it shows success, if we win seven, eight, nine games this year, I think that'll motivate people to give to NIL going forward because they see the 
the proof in the pudding, so to speak. Um, right. it, you know, bringing in XYZ worked. So they'll continue to give the NIL. And I pretty much think in this current environment, um, the only way you're going to be successful in college football going forward um, to whatever level you're playing at is to give to NIL. And uh, we got to be competitive with other American conference schools. We got to be competitive with Sunbelt and um, Conference USA schools and lower tier, you know, ACC schools to right. uh, because those are the people we're going to be competing against for players. No doubt, and you know, Kyle, with the uh, it's <laughs> and you know with um, and I'm sorry to me cut you off again, but with Hauser, we competed against Boise State. Uh, that was the competition for him. So, you know, some you know it's another group of five school, but. Uh, somebody totally outside the region. Yeah, I think with uh, when you look at when you look at NIL, it's the future of our sport. Uh, if you love college football, then it's the future of our sport. So we've got to come up with. Uh, we have to be creative. It doesn't matter how we feel about it. The bottom line is that's where we're headed. So those of you that are just saying there's no way in the world I'm going to ever give an NIL, Kyle and I both said from the jump, the first week. He and I want to win. He and I want to win as well. A don't, to me, I look at it like this: Why do you give to the Pirate Club? Well, your initial reaction is because I love ECU, but you want to be successful, particularly most people in football. Right. So, to me, you just have to view it the same way. Um, you just you, you got to view giving to NIL the exact same way. You're doing it to be successful in football. Yeah, it would be nice to have, see some loyalty from some of these kids. And we have. Look, uh, our our uh, our. Uh, the DB, the the oh, the All American, um, yeah, Rebe- oh, um, Rebel was off, was offered uh, was offered you know three hundred thousand dollars to go to the SEC. Now he you know uh, I go said the other day he's the highest played player on our team now, so he's probably getting over a hundred thousand from us. But uh, still, you're turning down three hundred thousand. You know, let's say he's, let's say he's getting a hundred. I don't know what he's getting. Let's say he's getting a hundred thousand from us. That's still a two hundred thousand dollar pay raise you turn down. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, um, I don't know what he's getting from us, but if he's the highest paid player, it's, it's you know, we got $2 million in NIL. It's got to be over 100000 And I think that another thing, Kyle, is that you pointed out a long time ago that these players, um, just because you go to the SEC and, yeah, you you know, the money, but I think a lot of these players are really upset about the 2-10 and 10 record, and I think that there's a hunger. Um, and I've asked, and I'll ask again in a couple weeks when we start covering the uh, – fall camp and then we have media day coming up my prediction media day will be august the 17th kyle so write that down hopefully you don't have a concert that night um but i hope you can make it missed you uh the last few years but have, have we not got an official date yet for media no, day? no but that's usually about the round the time it's usually around that time that saturday when they have it we'll see they'll probably change it up it'll probably be the well, it seems like the earlier you would announce media day uh the easier it would be to get more media there particularly from outside the Greenville, you know, Raleigh markets, maybe people that want to come over, cover the Pirates from Charlotte or Norfolk or Richmond, you know, surrounding areas. Right. Um, but, you know, hey, whatever. Yeah, but anyway, my point is I, I believe that the, this team, and we can ask a, a lot of the players, but I we all know that our program is better, that we're not a 10 and, a 2 and 10 program. Uh, Pirate Al said on the show last Sunday, by the way, Kyle, that, um, we had a two and ten season, but we're not a two and ten program. Yeah, well, a lot of people have been saying that. I, I, Holt Naylor said that. You know, I go talked about uh, how you know the biggest thing going for us right now, besides our defense, is our culture, which goes back to program. Um, right. So no, um, I agree with that. Um, but we're going to have to have a better offense, and we, you know, like I said, we've put the pieces there. You know, yeah. with with the question mark being the O line, um, with a lot of returning starters, a lot of experience on the O line, but they were bad last year. Um, now didn't have a quarterback. Um, from what I understand, uh, Donnie and the the O line coach from last year did not get along. Um, oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, um, JDB and the uh, new O line coach here, whose name escapes me right now. Um, from what I hear, they are complete lockstep. They are very familiar with each other. Um, have a lot of respect for each other. Uh, he's very, he, he's got a great resume. Um, so, uh, from what I hear, he doesn't love recruiting, um, which, you know what, that may, 
that may mean he's really good at player development, which in East Carolina for O-line could be good for us. Um, so, uh, but he has a good reputation as an O-line coach. Um, like, I like all our staff changes, really. I like I, you know, Magazoo, you know, yeah. Max coaching, coaching safety for us. Love having him back. Yeah, and I tell you what, uh, I tell you what, Kyle, right now, if if what we've heard is true from former people, former players, uh, they're saying, and I told you this, but I'm not saying it's me. It's not me saying this, but what we've heard in the offseason that makes you optimistic is that he can put 30 to 35 points a game offensively. If we have 30 to 35 points a game with that defense, as long as we stay healthy, we will be in the conversation for an AAC championship. I didn't say we're going to win it, but man, 30 to 35 points after what we've had last year would be a drastic improvement. Yeah, yeah. Phil still said he expected us to have double a double digit. Uh, what do we average last year? 17 points. So he's, he, he said a double digit increase in points. So if you do minimum of 10 points, that would be 27 points a game. Um, so let's say it is we can get to averaging 30 points a game. Well, wow. um, if our defense is as good as it was last year, yeah, we'll be very, very good. Um, but you know, time will tell. Uh, we we got to do it first. So, right. um, but I do think a lot of the pieces are there. Yeah, and I was going to say that for those listening right now, there's a lot of people upset, rightfully so, after last year, and they've got a lot of you know the the between the players and coaches. We know that there are people out there. You're gonna it's a show me state like Missouri, like people will say. And there's people that are going to have to earn that trust, I guess, back, if you will. And so um, there are a lot of people right now that are kind of wait and see. And I understand maybe lukewarm when it comes to uh, how the Pirates will be. But I really believe uh, the people that follow the program closely. And then you have I was really shocked when we heard we learned about Phil Steele's prediction. I really didn't expect that, even though I knew we were going to be better. I kind of I kind of had a, a hunch when I saw his all conference team and the amount of players we had on the all conference team because it came out first. Okay. That uh, he was going to be kind of bullish on us, and uh, uh, he is. You know, have like I said, most approved team in the country. Uh, he actually has us picked fourth or fifth in the league, but he does that in terms of be- what he considers to be the best teams. Um, he didn't really factor in the fact in, in the order when, when you look at the predicted order of finish. It's really not factoring in the fact that we don't play three of the teams that are above us. So right, that that's what I'm. That's why I'm saying. And like I said, one of us sets the power rankings call for us to go ten and two. Um, so not that Phil Steele's the end all and be all of college football, but if all six of us sets the power rankings call for you to go to a ball and you're on his number one most approved team, um, and you don't have a winning season, that would be an anomaly, <laughs> a huge anomaly. Yeah, I don't know that, you know, and I don't even want to think about that. Uh, We have the best fan base. I'm not being condescending, patronizing. Uh, We have the best, we really do. We have the best fan base in all of college sports, and I'll put our fan base against anyone in the nation. I'm I'm being sincere when I say that. Our fan base cannot take another 2-10, 2-10, and 3-9, and or a losing season period. I believe. Not this, you know. We got to have a winning season. Yeah, and I believe we will. I really do. I think I think the debate I, I really believe we're going to be a bowl team. It's just a matter of it's just a matter of how many wins. That's what it comes down to me. So that's the fun part is that I think we'll be over the hump of the bowl seat, the bowl kind of team if you will. It's just which bowl will we be playing for? You know, is it just barely isn't it the Cure Bowl, uh, Kyle? Yeah, Bowl? will we be a six and six type team going to the Cure Bowl, Myrtle Beach Bowl, or will we be a you know a, a seven win team with a you know where a bowl's locked in, but you at least have a winning record instead of going barely six and six? Or we're going to be an eight nine win type team. You know, I think most people with the with what we brought in, with how good the defense was last year, with the schedule, I think you know six and six. Most people see that as a it's the minimum this year. Um, and and quite honestly, you know, I, I you know, you, you wonder if six and six is even enough. Uh, again, I, I think it depends on how we get to six and six. I'm hoping we don't have to have this discussion. Exactly. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we're eight, you know, seven, eight wins. You know, you know, nine would be even better. But um, first things first, Norfolk State, uh, then on the road at Old Dominion, which to me is a very important game with the three yeah. after that, with with App Liberty and uh, UTSA. Um, that are your games very important. But look. Same goes for ODU. 
they play South Carolina the week before us and Virginia Tech the week after. So uh, we're a very important game to them. I'm sure they see it as a must win for their season. No doubt. Here's a question from former EC pitcher John White. Going back to when you were talking about if there was a one and five start, he said, I don't see that, but uh, would there be a midseason firing of the coach? He says, I'm way more optimistic than that, but would that happen? So if we go one and five, does go. Um, I, I don't see that happening either, but uh, he, that would be a loss to Charlotte, I believe, because let's see. Let me, let me count my games. We, that would be a win over Norfolk State, a loss to right. Old Dominion, a loss to App, a loss to Liberty. A loss to UTSA. Yeah, that would be a loss to Charlotte after that. Um, that might get him fired. Um, that might well, get him I fired. So, I, can tell you, I can tell you one thing. I can tell you one thing. After what we went through last season. Um, he would really need to beat Charlotte. L- let's say a one and four start then. Um, who was yeah. that, John White? Let, let's, yeah. let's say a one and four start. And then, uh, and then he turns it around and beats Charlotte. Uh, uh, no, then I think we could get on a roll. But, yeah, if we're one and four and then we lose to Charlotte, yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know if they fire him, but there'd be a lot of calls to fire him. Eat. Um, I don't heat. think that's going to happen, though. No, I, and I, I believe that uh, we've talked about this before, Kyle, but uh, you have the Liberty game and the App game. I think one of those – I feel good about the UTSA game because it's home, but I think the App and Liberty, those two games – we're going to win one or the other. Uh, we're going to lose one. We'll win one. I don't see us. If we win well, both, both if, games, we, if, we, if we lose them both, we're still all right. I mean, I don't want to lose them both. But right. if we beat, look, ODU is, people need to overlook that game. ODU was a bowl team last year. They were six. I, I, I got news for everybody. Don't, you know, I, I would, I bet you ODU is going to be a one to three point favorite in that game. Um, so ODU was a bowl team last year. Um, they've had some nice wins at home. They beat App up there last year in an upset. They've upset Virginia Tech and Norfolk twice. Um, so, you know, that's not going to be a cakewalk. But uh, let's say we do get past ODU. Um, that App game, to me, you, you talk about a game that could excite the fan base, rejuvenate the fan base. If you could find a way to beat App week three. Um, you know. Yeah. And, and even if you lose to ODU, I – Look, we could lose the ODU and beat App the next week. I know people are going to yeah. turn their head at that, but it's hey, like it's I say, possible. ODU beat App last year. It is totally possible. Uh, you know, let, let's say the Pirates lose a close one to ODU. ODU's a bowl team maybe again this year, and um, Appalachian just beat Clemson, and Pirates just lost to ODU, and App's flying high, and you know they just upset Clemson. They're on top of the world. They're not. You know, we're just going to go kick East Carolina's ass again. <laughs> um, so. Uh, you know, wouldn't shock me really. I don't want that to happen. I want to take care of business against ODU week two, but you know, if we lose a close one to ODU, don't, don't count out that game. Um, that one's at home and it should be a pretty good environment. Four o'clock kickoff. Um, wish it was a night game, but uh, it's pretty close. Second half will be at night. I'll tell you one thing. If uh, somehow, some way I feel good about the Norfolk state game and you're right about ODU, that's going to be a real dog fight. I, I see that obviously as a 50 50 game. That's not a cakewalk, but somehow, some way, like you said, Kyle, you start out two and oh, man, that app game, not only for the rivalry that, uh, that it is from way back in the day, the Southern Conference days, but the fact that it's, uh, it's a home game. You want to talk about a team, it's and uh, the emotion from it being a. And they've beaten us twice in a row. Yeah. And, and they've just really, quite honestly, as I've stated on this show, and I'd like to hear, you know, other people state it more publicly. They've stolen our identity. Now, is it, you know, have they come out and, you know, mocked us or anything like that? No. But what we used to be was the football school in North Carolina. We were the school that would go knock off Power 5 teams. Giant killer. We, we were, the, well, I don't like that term, but if you want to use it, um, we, we were the school that was competing for conference championships, winning got back-to-back conference USA championships, beating the ACC schools, you know, et cetera. Now it's been App. You know, App's been dominating the Sun Belt. They, you know, forget the Michigan game. That was way back when when they were FCS, one to play. But, you know, they've beaten Texas A&M. They've beaten South Carolina. They, they, they've they beaten North Carolina. Um, they've done all these things in recent years that we normally do. They're a consistent winner. Um, mm-hmm. they, they've kind of stolen our identity, and we need to get it back. And we have the opportunity to do that this year in Greenville to, to become, again, uh, you know, the football school in North Carolina, because 
with all due respect to NC State, uh, they can't decide if they're a football or basketball school. Um, so we need to take care of business somehow, some way against App this year. No doubt. And, you know, something, there's nothing wrong. We can give our props to App State. And, um, you know, they are right, a great program. I have a lot of respect great for program. Them. We have a lot of respect for them. But it doesn't mean uh, that we're not going to win that game. I think that, like I said, I could be wrong. But what I'm hearing is there's a lot of players, Kyle, that um, they have a really, I hate to use the term, but they have a really bad taste in their mouth. They are a much better team than they showed last year. And they I would imagine the defense, the way the defense played versus the record we have and all the guys yeah. are turning back on defense. That defense should come out with a bad, nasty attitude. And if they get any kind of support from that offense, um, you can really see that defense flying around this year. Yeah, and you know, uh, you know, some people, you know, say about the Norfolk State game. Uh, what do you? Let me ask you this, Kyle. What are you looking for? I know it's game one, and we've got a way. You know, we've got way more yeah. than a month. What are you looking for when you look when you go to that game, and you got your drink in your hand? It's really not game. way more than a month. It's just a little more than a month out now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I would have been looking forward to that game. Look, uh, Norfolk State's been horrible the last couple of years. One of the worst yep. programs in FCS. They do play a game before us. They play week zero. On August 24th, uh, they'll be playing on ABC. Uh, don't ask me against two. I cannot remember right now. Maybe Alabama a and I don't know. I, I, I looked earlier, and I've already forgotten. Uh, but that game will be on ABC. Uh, uh, it's the HBCU kickoff game. Um, so uh, uh, they, will, they will have a game under their belt. That's the one thing to their advantage. Your, your most improvement is they always say between game one and game two. Uh, but what I look for in that game um, – I look for us to be dominant um, defensively. Uh, offensively, I would expect us to keep it pretty simple, uh, make sure we do our routine stuff. I don't expect us to show a lot of our hand unless right. we have to. Um, I'm sure we're going to save that for ODU the following week. Uh, but what I would like to see, um, you would hope the offensive line could be dominant in that game against an FC, against a bad FCS opponent. Um so I would like to see that. Uh, I'd like to see us be able to run the ball consistently against them. I'd like to see us really show our tempo. Um, okay. I don't want us to show too much of what we're going to do on offense, but I would really like to see the tempo that we're going to run. Uh, because you got to, you got to get in game condition. You can practice that all you want to, uh, but we need to be able to go fast against ODU week two. So we need to get that going against um, against Norfolk State week one. So to me, that's that's important to see how well – we are able to execute that tempo because that's going to be a big part of this offense is getting plays off fast. Um, you know, on defense, I would expect dominance. I'd um, uh, like to see, um, you know, who's going to be, you know, the playmakers on offense. You, you would expect it to be um, um, the the kid that transferred from Florida State that was at West Virginia. Um, what Wilson, Wright, I can't think of his name. Yeah. Names are not my strength. Uh, but the kid that transferred from uh, Florida State that was at West Virginia prior to that, uh, Winston Wright Jr., yeah. uh, you would expect him to be uh, a, a playmaker for us. Uh, year two for um, uh, the kid that transferred here from Colorado was our best receiver last Sewell. year. Huh? Chase Sewell. Chase Sewell. Sewell. Yes, Sewell. Well, um, Yes, yeah, Sewell, another guy that's going to be a playmaker for us. Um, so I'd like to see us get the ball in playmaker's hands, but against Norfolk State, in in simple simple plays, I, I don't want us going too deep in the playbook, but get the ball in playmakers' hands. Rajay Harris um, is this going to be year two of him coming back from his knee injury. Uh, can Rajay look like he did his freshman year and at times during his sophomore year? Um, uh, you know, uh, can Marlon Gunn take the next step? Um, Javius Bonds, yeah, Bonds also. You know, lot of speed. Um, so these are things I'll be looking for in uh, in game one. I'll tell you one thing. By the way, uh, you were correct, sir. It is Florida A&M on ABC 730 on the Saturday night before our game. So you got it right. And I forgot, but they are the green and gold. So the green and gold is going to be coming to Greenville to take on the purple and gold. So um, that'll be interesting to say the least. And I'll tell you one thing. Uh, another thing that I'm looking for, Kyle, I, this is what I was thinking you were going to say, but if I'm Coach Houston, I want to get your thoughts on this, um, and then I've got a comment from James to post up here for you, your buddy James. But if I'm Coach Houston, don't you play both quarterbacks in the game one? Uh, it depends. Um, I go as, as said, I get. I don't know if this is coming from JDB, or I'm assuming it is. 
that uh, he would expect a starter to be named about two weeks before the end of fall camp, and they don't. He doesn't anticipate rotating quarterbacks. Um, but against Norfolk State, I'm just saying, not uh, in, in, in Norfolk State, you would expect us to be in a situation that we would play both quarterbacks because you would expect us to win that game going away. Right. Um, That's what I'm so, saying. So, yeah, I would say so. At the same time, uh, it's game one. You want your starter to get as much experience as he can. But, yeah, I would expect against Norfolk State we'll see both guys. All right, here's your buddy James. He said he'll trade you Kentucky for Norfolk State. <laughs> yeah, they have enough with uh, with Kentucky. Southern Miss does um, in Lexington. Uh, the, they upset Kentucky a couple years back, um, but uh, Southern Miss uh, has been down the last couple of years like we have and, and um, you know, picked towards the bottom of the Sun Belt again this year. Uh, they got um, They got Florida State's quarterback. Um, that played in the championship game, uh, the, the ACC championship game. Uh, he transferred in. So um, uh, I think Southern Miss will be better this year, but I don't think they're ready to upset Kentucky. And Robert says uh, D-line players high on offensive line transfer. Darius Bell, two-time first-team FCS and tight end Craig Kelly, slight injury this spring. He played in 35 games at Ole Miss and a few at Oregon last yeah, year. Uh, but tight end, yeah, and he caught a lot yeah. of touchdown passes at Oregon What limited time he played. Uh, very talented tight end. Uh, the kid that he's talking about, the alignment is from Maine. Um, he uh, looked very good in the spring. Uh, we're also um, bringing in an O-lineman that started for Charlotte um, two yep. years ago uh, who played at Conley. I uh, to ask you. Yeah. Yeah, he he uh, will be joining the team in August. He's got some, got some academics to clear up at um in Charlotte. And look, by the way, for any of our listeners, just to be clear, if you not that anybody said anything, normally Bubba's here to pick up the slack on names, so it's not as noticeable. Um, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I can tell you all these guys' backgrounds, but as Dave can attest, I will forget guest names and literally have to look at the Chiron here on the screen <laughs> to remember their names. I, I do not process people's names. It's just something I am horrible at. It's so okay. when, when I'm sitting here, I just want our listeners to know when I'm struggling with people's names, believe me, I know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, like I said, I, I couldn't think of Winston Wright Jr. Yet I, you know, I transferred from Florida State before that was at West Virginia, all Big 12 at West Virginia, got into a car accident. That's, you know, what limited his play at the time at Florida State. Right. But if that kid is up to what he was, if, yeah, if he right. gets back to what he was at West Virginia, he he will be a stud here. Think a about stud. JDB's offense with the skill players. Man. And I expect we would play him in the slot. Um, so um, if you remember, uh, this offense is going to be similar to Riley's offense. And if you remember, the slot receiver gets most of the touches in this offense. No doubt. And uh, so if you got him in the slot and he's up to, you know, let's say he's 80% of what he was at West Virginia uh, when he was all Big 12. If you got him in the slot and you got so well outside, um, along with a couple other receivers, um, we could be pretty good on offense um, w- with a friggin' quarterback. Um, and, and then, you know, the tight end situation, despite losing um, homie to Texas AM, um, we, uh, you know, we, we've got some depth there, particularly with the transfer from Oregon that was at Ole Miss before that. And um, the kid catches a lot of touchdown passes. Uh, I think Great he had play. like eight touchdown passes at Oregon um, in limited playing time this past year. Oh, God. James is killing you, man. Let me put this up here so you can respond. He said he's known Kyle. James has known you for almost 20 years. He's got Alzheimer's when it comes to people's names. No shit. No, he's right. Uh, and the chemo didn't help with that. But um, I am horrible with people's names. That's always been the case. As right, uh, we mentioned that Winston Wright Jr. was a high caliber kick returner too. Yes, After he was. The, he's the one that I was going to mention. He's um, I, I don't know that I'd have him returning kicks. Um, coming off the injury from two years ago with yes. the wreck. But yes, um, it, well, if he's a hundred percent, maybe. Um, but yeah, um, he uh, uh you, you know, you may want Bond to do that. Um, but yeah, he he was a good kick returner also at uh at WVU. And by the way, I've got some intel for you, Kyle. Um, right. you, you were talking about Panda Askew. He's going to be with the team in fall camp. He has two years of eligibility. And I was talking to, I would just say, I was talking to someone who knows that family. Um, so I had a little bit of intel for you. 
uh, I want to talk about tonight. So I'm glad you brought him up. Uh, apparently, uh, for these folks, have said that the I believe he's going to be a walk on. He may be. Uh, he actually is someone that wants to finish his career locally because when he went to Charlotte, apparently the inside the locker room, we'll just say it that way, is very toxic. And so he, when he came here and he's with the coaches and everything and the players have really accepted him, he's a local kid. Um, it's apparently a night and day difference between Charlotte where it's toxic and where it's more like a family. And the, uh, we talked about the program. Um, he's extremely happy and ready to join the team. Um, again, it looks like it's going to be the first day of camp that he'll be able, uh, well, not, I don't know if it's eligible, but he'll be, like yeah, he, 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 he wasn't able to come before now because he was had to finish up some academics at Charlotte. So I'm assuming the 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 second summer semester ends at Charlotte, uh, probably what middle of July. Probably just ended. It probably just ended. Yeah. So cool, he, yep. so uh, hopefully he'll be here the first day of camp, which is July 31st when they support report. Uh, but if not, maybe it'll be soon thereafter. As uh, long as he's here by the second week of camp, he, he should be good. As long as he's been keeping up his um. His, his physical conditioning um, during this time. Yeah, he's been working hard on, I do know that he's been working hard, I believe, by himself or, you know, obviously can't be with a team. But in other words, he's not just been lying around doing yeah. absolutely nothing. And he He'll started at team. Charlotte. You know, he didn't yeah. start last year because uh, uh, Biff brought in all the, uh, the, the Power 5 transfers, but he started at Charlotte prior to that. Um, I wouldn't expect him to start here, but I would expect him to be in the two deep. Um, so... Uh, he's definitely more than a warm body. A, a kid with starting experience at the FBS level um, and a local kid. Uh, so um, Still glad, to, glad to have him. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, we want people, I said this about uh, work, but obviously with ECU, we want people that want to be pirates. And we've got a lot of people. And I'll tell you one thing, we talked about it last year. Winning cures everything. Yes, we had the bad season last year, but if we have that turnaround like we are capable of and we're hearing about and everything that's on paper, then guess what? Then everybody's going to more season tickets are bought. The bowl season, bowl tickets are bought. And uh, Robert says, chiming in about uh, Panda Askew, he said, toxic, toxic locker room at Charlotte makes sense. Over 50 transfers, and it's where Omega Blake ended up. Yeah, um, wow. uh, you know, Poji is trying to microwave the situation, and I will. Well, get- in, in this day and age, honestly, um, I don't even know that that's fair to say anymore um, because of the NIL and the transfer portal, like it was when Ruffin was here. Um, but yeah, he's taking, and I think he took like yeah, last year he it's took like I, I, he took he took a bunch more transfers this year. Yeah, he uh, did. out of the portal. So. Um, you know, I don't know. They beat us last year. They shouldn't have. Um, well, the most annoying game of the season to me last year. I hated that game. Ten to nothing. Uh, it was ten to seven, if I remember ten right. To seven, you're right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it was. Ten we, had chan- we, we had a chance to tie the damn thing at the end, missed the field goal. Um, so I um, or do we throw a pick? I don't remember what the hell happened, but it's we uh, we we lost the son of a bitch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i mean we just, were driving on them at the end of the game i, I remember that so will made a couple of big catches and um right. i mean they were uh, do we throw a pick i don't remember what happened i remember or did it end up being a long field goal we had it set up for a short field goal and i i, I wanted to I play for you we we threw a pass and got sacked or threw a pick i don't remember if somebody can remember exactly what happened at the end of that game uh i can't remember if we missed a long field goal but there was a pass play that i was surprised we did we should have just been trying to set up a short field goal. We would have beaten them in overtime. Uh, I, I was behind the Charlotte bench, and piss was running down their legs. They were scared to <laughs> death. If we'd have sent that game into overtime, we'd have won it. You're right. You're you're absolutely right. There's sometimes when you know that you've got to win it uh, in regulation at the end of regulation. There's yeah, some when you're on the road at Florida. You know, yeah, Ruff, 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 we threw a pick. We threw a pick. He, okay. He yes. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, because we were setting up a short field goal. Um, yeah, you know, Ruffin, I, if you remember when we were driving on Florida about to tie the game up, and uh, Ruffin said after the game, yeah, that uh, we were going to go for two. Um, 
yes, that's a situation where you need to win the game right then. You don't want to go to overtime. Not but when you're, at, when you're at home playing Charlotte, yeah, that's a situation we should have played for overtime. No doubt. I tell you what, it's exciting to think about uh, the season. And Kyle, you and I have been following Pirate football for a long, long time. And this is, it just feels like I know that uh, obviously we got to get our players to fall camp. But as a fan, this has been the longest, quote unquote, off season ever because I'm just I, jacked up. Uh, yeah, man. I, I disagree with you a little bit. I mean, well, I've, I'm, maybe, yeah, um, maybe. Um, I, I was distracted so much with medical stuff, getting ready for my hernia repair surgery. Okay. Um, I am other things, uh, before that. Um, I really, you know, normally my excitement for football kicks in about spring practice time and I'm, and I'm fired up all the way through summer, but I really didn't start getting fired up for football until sometime in June. And, um, so, um, it's really kind of sneaking up on me how fast it's coming that, um, the guys are going to report to practice next week. Media Day is the American. We, we haven't discussed that yet. Dave. Yeah, let's talk about uh, that, American yeah. Athletic Conference Media Days um, start, start tomorrow, tomorrow with the majority of it being Tuesday. Uh, I believe it is going to air. I believe it is. Is it ESPN uh, Plus? It, it is on ESPN Plus. I believe it's nine Eastern, uh, eight Central. Right. It's yeah. going to air live Tuesday uh, with our friend Rennie Angoli. Rennie and God damn it. That just shows you how bad I am at names. Rennie Angolia. Um, he's going to be doing it along with a couple other people, uh, on ESPN plus. So, uh, tune in Tuesday, I believe at nine Eastern. Um, and, uh, it's going to be live from Irving, Texas. Um, and you, if, if any, if any of our fans happen to be in the Texas area, they're asking fans to come out. Uh, they said there's going to be giveaways, opportunities to meet the coaches and players. Work. Um, the, there's going to be a, um, a kiosk set up with the, uh, college football game where, they're encouraging, they're encouraging fans to come out. So if you happen to be in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, come come out uh, to American Athletic Conference Media Days. Well, here's one of the things that uh, stand the first Do, you, do you know, have you heard who Houston's taking with him? Oh, I did the other day. Oh, my gosh. Um, oh, we we, we got to get our knowledge together, Dave. We, 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 we can't. We can't come yeah. up here and ask no, and ask to. our listeners to answer these questions. No, I had some other <laughs> stuff I was going to talk about. So, um, yeah, we can if y'all can help me on that one. Uh, give give us throw us a bone there. I was going to talk about this is only the second commissioner in the history of the league as uh, Mike Oresco uh, retired, and Tim Pernetti yeah. will have his very first uh, media day. So I'm looking. Good uh, point. Uh, yeah, to hear from him. Yeah, good point. Um, that was my first thing I was going to talk about. Um, and uh, as Mr. James mentions, the Sun Belt Media Days are this week too. Yeah, Sun Belt Media Days this week. Were those held at New Orleans, James? I'm assuming that's where the offices are. I was. So, uh, that'd be a good. Uh, guess, yeah, a great. So, town. That's a great city, man. I love New Orleans. Um, oh but, man, James! Ask James what his opinion of New Orleans is. Oh, he doesn't. James, you don't like New Orleans. Well, growing up in Hattiesburg, he's been in New Orleans a lot more than you have. He hates New Orleans. Oh man. Yeah. All right. You were wait. Johnny says Conrad missed a forty-eight yard field goal with thirty-four seconds left in the Charlotte game. So yeah, I believe that's right. Um, what we did, if I remember it, right, if I remember correctly. We got sacked. That is exactly what happened. Uh, we right, attempted sacked. a pass play. We we what I well we had it in a better field goal range, and then we tried to throw a touchdown pass to Sewell. We tried to catch him off guard and throw to the end zone. To, 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 we were going to try to throw to Sewell, and we got we got sacked and had to attempt a forty eight yard field goal it instead of instead of sitting up. Yeah, it would have already been closer. And if we would have just kept running the ball, we could have attempted a chip shot and. um Instead, uh, the one time Donnie decided to be aggressive all last year, <laughs> or Houston, whoever made that call, it was I at the worst time possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, James, man, it's nasty. I love the food down there, but the people are just bad people. Um, he's talking about on Bourbon Street. Uh, he's yeah, had a lot of bad experiences he's told me about on Bourbon Street, about people trying to uh, scam them out of money, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, well, we were talking about media days, uh, so we have uh, Tim Pernetti. We'll see what, how he how he does. I'm sure he's a great speaker, and obviously they made the great choice in our second commission. I don't know if he's great or not. I don't know anything about him, so uh, I, I you know it'd be interesting to see. I, I don't even know his background. I think I read his bio when he was hired, 
and uh, it's gone. It's gone in you know one ear and out the other, so to speak. But uh, I'm interested to hear from him, see what he has to say about the future of this league. Um, you know um, what his ideas are uh, going forward. You know, there's still a lot of unknown with conference expansion. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of rumors, a lot of a lot of suddenly a lot of UNC to the SEC talk all of a sudden. Um, you know, Washington State, Oregon State. You know, are they just going to uh, merge with the Mountain West fully and go under the Pac-12 banner, or are they going to try to rebuild a, a new Pac-12 um, with teams from across America? Um, so a lot still to, to be determined. So uh, would like to hear uh, the new commissioner's thoughts on all that. And uh, Robert says, CFP committee member announced to the Big 12 media that weather, hotels, and ticket sales could affect who hosts the first round playoff games over rankings. The first is mm-hmm. already in. So there you go. The first is already in. What does he mean? Is he talking about the first round? Pl- he's talking about the first round playoffs. Uh, so, I mean, playoff- weather, hotels, and ticket sales could affect the first round playoff games over rankings. The first is already in. I, I don't oh, understand that. He's saying the fix is already in. The fix is already in. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, you know, you, you hear the, I believe one through four gets a buy. Yeah. Uh, supposedly. So maybe, you uh, think, you would think that five, five, it would be the five, 12 game, the six, 11 game. Yeah. Well, right. well I, you know what? Though? Maybe, uh, you, weather, you know, Hey, maybe, uh, maybe yeah. you, you East got Carolina, Carolina comes in as the 12 seed when we, when we go eleven and one and win the American and and, and represent the group of five and and we're paired with uh, the five seed who is uh, maybe um, hell I don't know um, Wisconsin and uh, it's going to be very snowy up at Camp Randall so they have to travel down to Greenville. Sounds good to me. And by the way, you, Kyle, you know the last game of the regular season is home against you know what Navy. team? Yeah, I've never beaten Navy in Greenville, but. Um, I don't ever remember closing the regular season with Navy and Greenville. I don't either. You're right. Uh, maybe, that. maybe one year under Scotty. Maybe um, it was late one year in November. I don't know if we closed the season with. I don't them. remember the last game. Yeah, I don't remember ever remember playing them. Usually, it feels like we play them in October or maybe. No, late. we play we play them in November quite a bit, but it's never been the last game. Um, yeah. Not here. We we have up there. We played them up there as their last game of the regular season. Okay. Uh, we beat them on a last second field goal up there yeah. with their last game of not counting army, their last home game. Um, but we're due to beat them in Greenville. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I tell you what, um, <laughs> that, yeah, you ain't kidding. Last game of the year in Greenville, whether we got six wins, seven wins, eight wins, nine wins, we need to win that game. Um, if we win that, if we win that game, I can see Kyle, uh, tearing down the goalpost. <laughs> nah, well, nah, I'm not, I might tear down the goalpost. We don't want it. Um, but no, we definitely need to beat yeah. Grave. It is ridiculous that we've never beaten Navy and Grable. Um, you know, never lost the army, never beaten Navy. Navy. Um, you know, let's beat them both this year, but, uh, wouldn't be surprised if we reverse those scripts. If we lose that army and then beat Navy and Grable. So James is obviously a Southern Miss guy. He said, that'll be my luck. We got to Omaha first, and you'll get to the playoffs first. Hey, I'll take you. You know what? It's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I love East Carolina. So if we get the playoffs first, we're going. And by the way, I had to mention this. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. But God almighty, could you imagine the excitement around here if we made the playoffs? I mean, yeah. there'll be excitement around here if we just, you know, seven win, eight, go eight. Well, eh, seven people will be happy, but. Eight and four people will be excited. Yeah, nine and three. Uh, Kyle, you, I mean, can you imagine this? Uh, by the way, I want to mention this to a sidebar. We've been talking about football. There was a stat that came out. A salad bar? A stat. Stat. You said you said something about a bar. I thought you said something about a salad bar. <laughs> no. A stat came out. Oh, you out. said sidebar. Okay. So, yeah. No, a okay. sidebar. Yeah. No, okay. So a sidebar uh, for you this week, I saw where East Carolina, you probably saw this too, in baseball, for all our baseball fans that was hating, yeah. the world, we have the third most wins. I think it's is it since 2018? 200. Uh, it, was, it was even, I think it was even further. I think it was the last 10 years. Yeah, 274 wins, which is third in the whole yeah, nation. As in our, and our buddies, since James is here, Southern Miss is sixth. Yep. That's so, 
So, uh, yeah. Oh, it was great. Uh, the, the problem is we haven't been to Omaha yet. And you, that's that's what gets people upset. And obviously, the amount of people we had hit the portal this year with the amount of graduates we have yep. is very concerning. It is very concerning. We have, we have, uh, we've got to get some NIL money in here for baseball. And um, Coach has got to embrace the portal a little more. Um, now, one thing that should help with recruiting and the portal, even without NIL money, is the amount of players we got drafted this year. We set a record, I believe, for the amount of guys we got drafted this year. Yeah, a so. lot. And as uh, John White says, a guy that should know, as you know, Kyle, he was a uh, pitcher under Coach O. Right. Uh, huge rebuild year. Absolutely, John. And I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. You know something? You know something? It seems like, as East Carolina fans, and Kyle, you've mentioned this before. I'm going to give Kyle credit on this. But I'll um, this this rebuild year, where there's no expectations for you're referring to baseball, baseball. Yeah, sorry. Um, huge. Oh, yeah, there's always expectations. So the expectation, even in a rebuild year, is for us to win the American. Right. No. 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 I know that. What I'm saying is legitimately getting there to Omaha when we're just like, oh, you know, okay, you know, this is a rebuild year, and then the years that we are, you know, like, oh, we've got like every college all star on the team, and then it just doesn't happen. Um, you know, it, it does hurt. It does hurt. And I hate hearing from national media. Yeah, they're the program that's been more times in a regional that has never made it to Omaha. Well, it's true. I mean, it's, I know. it's true. I, I, know, I mean, I, in, I in, a, in a way, it's, it's, it's a compliment because you've been to that many regionals. And, you know, look, Cliff's not responsible for all that. I, you know, but Billy and, and, and you know, uh, Coach Overton had their opportunities to get us to Omaha. Didn't do it. Coach, Coach, uh, Coach Claire didn't didn't have very many opportunities, but amazing, uh, amazing. Oh yeah, don't don't let Randy off the hook. Um, he just so, retired from West Virginia. Yeah, I'm not a good coach. Um, but I um, but but the point is, it's it's true, and um, it's annoying, and you um you feel like um, you know, Coastal was the second most, um, and then they went and won the damn thing. Um, so um. We'll get there one day. I think it's going to get harder and harder uh, as the uh, as the NIL money is now starting to trickle into baseball more and more. Yeah, we got to um, get I our think, numbers up. Yeah, we got to um, honestly. And I know you uh, look basketball. We were at four hundred thousand. It's not enough to make a difference. Um, we always suck at basketball. <laughs> so give that four hundred thousand to baseball. <laughs> it would make a difference in baseball. Well, hey, you know as well as I do. There's so much interest in baseball that I could easily see uh, over a million dollars for the tw- I'm it's, it's uh, we're nowhere near there man we're nowhere no, near there we're not I know we're not but we don't even have the money for baseball we do for basketball we I know but we we meaning not us because we promoted the heck out of it starting with Bubba but we our show has promoted the hell out of it but um if you don't watch our show or listen to our show 23 club People, uh, they don't know about it. I, I have to, I've told so many friends and so many uh, fellow fans. I think it's almost confusing, though, uh, when you already have Team Boneyard. Uh, though 23 Club, I know, is, is is basically the baseball arm of Team Boneyard. Yep. I think having different names for things confuses people. Uh, and I get 23 Club is a cool thing. Uh, but I, I would just use one banner as Team Boneyard. I think, um, I think it becomes too confusing. Um, when you promote things under different brands like that. And, of course, you can join the Pirate Club, 252-737-4540, or you can go to simply ecupirateclub.com. Um, and I tell you what, we're uh, we're at a point now, like we talked about, the indoor practice facility, the baseball facility. Please go ahead and make that donation to Pirates Unite. I'm tired of talking about the fact we need $3 million. Seems like we've been at $3 million for one of our friends. Yeah, and you've been, yeah, and you've promoted uh, 23club.org, but as football season approaches, uh, we still need more money just straight for uh, straight NIL. So, uh, yep. you know, teamboneyard.com, um, join. You can join for as little as $10 a month. Um, you know, and we need, look, quite frankly, if you can, you know, if you can pay $100 a month, $1,000 a month, whatever, but anybody can afford $10 a month. If you can't afford $10 right. a month, let, let me know. I'll spot you 10 bucks. Um <laughs> I mean, it's, a month is, is yeah, it's not even it's not even a fucking millet. Or excuse me, I try not to use that one. It's not even a freaking millet. Uh, Bojangles hardly anymore. So um, you can't even get like a supreme dinner for ten bucks hardly. 
So yeah. just just you know, cut out one trip to Bojangles a month and join uh, Team Boneyard if you're not a member already. And if there's a um, a philosophical reason you don't want to give the NIL, um, if it keeps you from giving, give the ten dollars a month. You, you let let you know, just pretend like it's um, you know, you're buying a pack of cigarettes. I don't know, whatever your habit is. Well, and another thing too is the very fact of Kyle and I are very competitive as people, and the fact of the matter is whether we like NIL or not, we want to win. I've said that earlier in the show. So How are the rums? I want to win. Is it was it rum or vodka? What what's the what's the uh? Oh man, what, they had that at the yeah at the. Uh, I know what's the, the name of that the crushed vodka you're talking about. Yeah, what well, yeah what what whatever it is that's out this uh, ABC store the the suppose yeah the ABC stores up uh, Eastern North Carolina. Where the money goes to Team Boneyard, um, really. So, cool. um, and we appreciate all the people at uh, at Sub Dogs for having that that Crush Vodka. Um, I think that's what it's called, Crush Vodka, or something like that. I don't remember. We, we we again, we need to have our information together. We'll do better in the future. Uh, okay, uh, Elliot's joining us now. Hey there, Elliot. Hey, Kyle and Dave. I'm late getting here. How? Is yeah, it? yeah, it's about the end of the show, Elliot. Yeah, we were getting ready to wrap things up uh we'll call for i tell you what it's like uh speaking of alcohol we'll make this last call if you've got a question or comment go ahead and put that up on the screen what was elliot's question how's the football team looking yep i will let you know uh starting july 31st when they report to camp but on paper uh, i think we look pretty good yeah we've been saying that a lot go ahead and get your uh, season tickets by the way it looks like we're kyle gonna um, meet that goal once again of fifteen thousand. And everybody says, well, 15000 is not big. Well, let me tell you something. If we can sell 15,000 season tickets going 2 and 10, um, I'll take it. I want to have, obviously, more than 15000 yeah. but it looks like we're on pace to at least have that. We may go over. Is what yeah, what's our food and allotment? Oh, is it 6000 No, it's more than 6000 Uh, twelve thousand, ten or 12000 I think. Yeah, because you count guest tickets also. You, you Normally, yeah. back in the day, anyway, you, you, you got one student ticket and one guest ticket. Um, you have to so join. Let's say, so, so let's say twelve thousand. You have so, to join um, the, the student pirate club, and it's uh, the ticket is fifty dollars a year, or used that's what it used to be a handful of years ago. Wow, it was free when when Jessica attended. So that's correct. Guest but they, but um, you know, that's part of the student pirate club, you have to pay fifty. Well, well let's say we sell out. You know, student student tickets twelve thousand and fifteen thousand. Well, there you go. You're almost at thirty thousand right there. Makes things a lot easier. So yes. Yeah, so, you, you, I'd like to get us back close to 20,000 season tickets or at 20,000 season tickets, but college football attendance has been going, sports attendance in general has been going down in recent years. And um, coming off a 2-10 and 10 year, no Power 5 team, no ACC team on the schedule at home. Um, you know, the most appealing home games against App State uh, with probably Navy being second, and that's Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so uh, 15,000 season tickets with 2-10, and 10, and no power five opponent. Um, it's actually not bad at all. No doubt. Uh, that's going to be great. And uh, he says he hopes we have a good quarterback this year and a better offensive line. Amen, Elliot. We. Uh, yeah. Well, we. I think we got two good quarterbacks. Depends on which one's going to start. O line. Um, got a lot more experience. New O line coach. Couple new pieces on the line. I wish um, we'd have had a couple more. But you know what I mean. It's hard to get O linemen. But. Um, yeah, the potential's there to be pretty good this year, Elliot. All right, here's a question for you, Kyle. I, I know where I was. Positive question as we won. Where were you two during the Peach Bowl, ECU, NC State, way back in the day? So I'll go let you go first, Kyle. Well, I was 11 years old um, in January 1st, 92, and um, was not really a football fan yet. Um, but I can rem- tell you where I was. Um, I was my cousin, my, my cousin, Timmy, um, his neighbor was a girl named Jennifer and we were at her house, uh, watching a movie and the game was on in the background on the radio. And, um, I remember listening to it in the background and hearing East Carolina one and being happy that East Carolina won but was not a pirate yet, didn't care about athletics, did not fall in love with pirate football until 94. Um, but uh, that's where I was. Dave, are you froze on us there? Hear me? There, I'm back. Yeah, Dave, you're cutting in and out. 
All right, guys. I believe. Well, we got Dave. Yeah, right. James is asking how old I was. I was actually 18 um, during that game. In fact, uh, that game was January 1st, 1992. It was three, a little over three, about three and a half months before my 19th birthday. Birthday, and I was actually I got a ticket, and uh, believe it or not, my best friend and I were in the NC State section. And of course, you know, I'm, so I'm, you were there. I was there. I was miserable. Oh my God. I was miserable because I was going, I can't believe we're down. We are so much better than this. And I was so upset. And then in that fourth quarter, man, I caught all kinds of grief those first few quarters, obviously. And that fourth quarter, it was quiet. It was quiet. I was one of the only guys that was cheering, obviously. And it was really awkward to cheer. Um, but you know what? Um, I would have been talking mad shit. <laughs> uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. I saw a dude that was drunk as a skunk, and that game was like a noon game. And he had a purple, never forget it. He's trying to walk down the stairs of Fulton County Stadium. He had a purple uh, tuxedo on. And um, he didn't, he uh, passed out. I think it was sometime in the first or second quarter. There was all kinds of things like that. There's some people that, uh, Kyle, they were good Pirate fans that never even made it to the game because they partied hard the night before. Imagine that in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and they never made it to the game. They were sleeping when the game was. Wow. Uh, well, that's uh, sad. Well, I guess they were happy with the results. Um, yeah. But yeah, I can't imagine making the trip to Atlanta to go to the Peach Bowl uh, and then, you know, missing the game because I slept through it. When it probably the biggest game in the history of our program. Oh, oh, oh yeah, no doubt. It definitely is. <laughs> but anyway, we had a great time. And uh, man, that ride back. It was myself and one of my best friends. Uh, we're in a BMW, and we were riding from Atlanta to Charlotte. Let me tell you something. BMWs, uh, nice looking, but on the especially the back seat, wow, there's no room. There was no room. I can't remember what kind of BMW that was, but it, that was the worst part of the trip to and from Charlotte was literally that uh, ride. The, uh, so. Anyway, James is saying that I was in Philadelphia in 1776, but was too hungover to sign the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, the Declaration of Independence. I was there. I was there in Philadelphia, right? But I didn't make that. Probably the most important thing. Dave was in Philadelphia as well. I think James is calling you old, Dave. Yeah, he is. It'll be all right. It's okay. I'm just happy to be alive, man. I'm 51. Uh, I'm happy to be alive, well, and kicking. And um, hey, that's uh, you know it, it beats. Definitely beats the alternative for sure. Kyle, do you have anything before we wrap this up? Uh, no. Um, just, uh, you know, been enjoying playing the college football game. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to play, what the hell is my name on there? I think it's Bleeds. I think my name on there is Bleeds Purple 2014, I believe. All one word. Um, uh, let me double check that. But uh, right. if you want to if you want to play me, add me, and uh, we'll, we'll play. We can, do, we can do East Carolina against East Carolina. In reference to last week's show, Ernest T. Bass was fired as a crossing guard for throwing rocks at cars, and Malcolm Merriweather was hired to replace him. Ernest already didn't like Malcolm for being because he was an English and challenged yeah. him into a fight. So, that's right. That's right. Good recall on that one. Thank you, Jr. That's a great way to uh, end our show, Kyle. Man, uh, thank you so much. I'm glad you're doing better. I was going to say that at the beginning of the show. I'm glad you're doing better. Yeah, getting there. Getting there. Not there yet, but definitely getting there. I feel a lot better than I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, hopefully the progress continues uh, onward and upward. I've had a lot of thoughts and prayers for you, man. Appreciate you very much. And uh, looking forward to – we got a lot of uh, cool things headed our way uh, for this season. We're working on behind the scenes, which Kyle and I have to talk about. So I'll tell you about that, Kyle. Uh, in the meantime – uh, we appreciate you coming on, and we're trying to do shows every uh, Sunday so, night. Uh, did you? So, are we? Have we? Have we signed the NIL deal with the cheerleader yet? I mean, I know we were talking about it. So. You're supposed okay. to keep it a secret. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, it was supposed to be on the down low, but uh, right. yeah, we're working on that. We're working on that behind the scenes. Okay. All right, all right. I'll let you be the chief negotiator in that. All right, we'll get out of here before I get in more trouble. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and as always, go Pirates. You're watching the Sports Objective, the podcast for pirates.